my name is Spencer Hobber. I'm in third grade now. I'm with the charity group, and I'm going to be in charge of Grandpa Chief. My rod comment. Oh, I was robbed! We heard Grandpa shouting. It's a disaster! Come quickly! He was still shouting his mom, Agatha, and I ran up the stairs. Grandpa's room was a mess, but to be honest, it was always a mess. He blamed Gump, his old dog, but Gump looked cruel to me to make, to make much of a mess. What was taken, gasped Mom? Your VCR? Your television? Not your gold plate and golfing trophy? No, it's much more serious. It's my teeth. They've been stolen. Grandpa normally kept his teeth in a glass of water by the bed. The glass was still there, but the teeth were missing. You haven't swallowed them your mistakes, have you? Of course not. Those teeth were special. Handmade by the finest with Christmas. I got looked up at Mom and whispered, Why is Grandpa talking so funny? You see how serious this is? I may never speak the same again. Mom called the police. Officer Rick looked grave. We have done a thorough search of the room and house and we have found nothing at all. No teeth, no clues. Every room was at home at the time of the theft. So all the thief got in and out without being seen is a mystery. Officer Rick took us all down to the station for further investigation. Using Grandpa's description, the police drive us through a picture of the missing teeth. Then he put up on one of with all the others. We made copies of them all over town. Officer Ray rounded up the usual suspects and took them in for questioning. All of them rasped a smile. Most of them had missing teeth as well, but just <coughs> one or two, not the whole set. They even read in our unfriendly neighbor Mrs. Carbuncle because her own teeth didn't fit. Grandma didn't recognize her or the teeth on the police lineup. I've never seen her smile before. After several days, Officer Reed had to admit that no teeth had been found, no thieves had been caught, no new clues had been uncovered. Grandma suspected everyone, especially anyone who didn't smile. Soon, the whole town was smiling at him. Although he never smiled back, he had nothing to smile with. Mom even, a call, Mom even got a call from one of those TV shows, Unsolved Crimes. They came to a house in a helicopter. We had to reenact the whole thing. While Grandma was interviewed, he asked the reporter, Pearl White, if he could borrow some of her teeth. After all, we have more than enough. Because of Grandma, everyone watched Unsolved Crimes. But no one called off Sarate, and the crime remained unsolved. It seemed the only way to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the teeth in your mouth were your own was to smile broadly at every person you met. Because of Grandma's teeth, the whole town was beginning to suffer. Torsing the endless sea of smiling faces were too scared to get out of their cars. <coughs> that night, the town hall was full. Speaker after speaker stood up to complain. Pastor Butter summed up the situation. Well, I have always considered this a happy town. There are limits. No one wants to smile without a reason. It's time I believe to put a stop to it. The crowd cheered. Mr. Pert was on one of the finest sets of teeth in the country, and even he alone cannot afford to replace them. But if every one of us puts a dollar in the collection plate tonight, we'll have enough to buy two new sets of teeth. Both people put in a dollar. I was put in two. At the presentation ceremony, Grandpa opened the package and revealed two new sets of teeth. Why are they all different sizes, asked the mayor. Only one's up for me. The other one's for Mrs. Carbuncle because her other teeth didn't fit perfectly and she had such a pretty smile. Grandpa was happy with his new teeth. So was Mrs. Carbuncle. They smiled all the time. In fact, they were so happy that Grandpa dog, old dog Gump smiled too. For the first time ever.